Hey you all, so I want to come on and talk about my first two shifts working um, on a med surge unit. I did orientation, so the, these are two days of orientation. So it wasn't, I wasn't on the floor myself. Oh my gosh. So it's my first time coming on a unit, like not coming on the unit, but actually like working on the unit. Um, but I was doing orientation. So I got two days of orientation. I'm keep saying orientation. Um, and the first day I had no access to Epic, which was like, so I worked on some, uh, they're called LMS learning modules. I worked on those and I worked on getting my password. I had to go through a lot to get a password. That was cool. And I worked on taking a lot of notes from the nurse that I was getting orientation from. Just writing a lot of stuff down. And then the second day, I ended up getting access to Epic. But it wasn't at the beginning of the shift. It was like more so like around 2, two or 3 o'clock. So I did get some access to Epic, which was cool. And I felt like I was like a way more comfortable on the unit. Um, more people were on the unit. Um, one of the charge nurses, she was working on the unit. She was actually working the floor. Um, which I kind of like the idea that the charge nurses work the floor and they charge at some point sometimes. Um, not in the same, you know, shift. But sometimes they pick up and they're working the floor. I do like that because it keeps them in tune with the floor and the flow of the floor. So they're more understanding, I think. Um, but also it can make their role as the charge nurse be like more relaxed because they're kind of still working with you side by side when they're not charging. Um, but that's that. So I did work with the charge on the second day. I didn't orientate with her, but I worked with her on the floor because I was working with another nurse. Uh, I helped more with the report on the second day. Like at the end, we read reports of the nurse. The first day I didn't say anything. The second day, I helped a little bit more with certain, like it was just like one specific patient that we did a lot on that one patient child. And I was just adding like, okay, we also did this, we also did that. Like we, it was a lot we had to do. Um, so that's that, I feel good about it. I feel like I can do it, but I also, oh, are you waving me? Hi. I also, um, like, I know there are certain things, like, I'm not going to know. Like, I'm, like they had a terp, right? Which I know what a terp is. I know that it has to do with the prostate and all that jazz, right? And I know it's a surgery. But, like, I didn't know, like, as far as irrigating the bladder. And they've got these huge bags that you have to use to irrigate the bladder. And they had, like, stacks of them outside the patient room. I was like, oh, my gosh, it's crazy. Um, but that wasn't my patient. But, like, I've never dealt with that. So, I would feel kind of, like, slow if I'm in situations where I, I haven't worked with that type of equipment or like yeah i would feel kind of like uh dang it like even like setting up an ekg i've never done that before but also i feel like you know what it's text there it's other nurses there it is what it is i'm just gonna have to ask for help and just do what i gotta do but at the end of the day i just be like brandy you've been a nurse you've been a nurse at the end of the day you know nursing you know when something don't look right you know if them vitals ain't looking right you know if that patient don't look right you know them labs don't look right you know you know nursing so at least rely on what you know. You know time management. Brandy, you taking care of 40 plus people. Literally. Had to put eyes on 40 plus people. You had to give them pills to 30 plus people. Like you worked. So manage your time well. Take your time, but also manage your time. And I was like, I could do this. Because I was I was always also on the second day, I was thinking I wrote down like more. I went over my notes from the first day and then wrote like organized them a little bit better. So I can know more okay, about what times I'm going to be charting because like they, you have to chart a full assessment at the beginning of your shift and then every four hours after that you need to chart like a more focused assessment on your patient. Um, so there's that. So I was writing that down like okay so I can get an idea of how I want my time management to be when I'm working on a unit. So I've been thinking about that and then this weekend so I worked Monday, Tuesday end up having almost like oh two weeks off because i don't go back to work until next saturday so i worked monday tuesday then i had wednesday all the way go another monday tuesday all the way until next saturday so i got like two weeks off which is cool so during this time when i be creating content editing content posting content hopefully i'll have 
a good amount of videos either already posted or either sitting there waiting to be posted and i pretty much go through all of my footage and edit everything that i need to edit i also have some voice recordings that i've done that i can turn into like little mini podcasts on here on youtube so i'm gonna use my time wisely child and me and my children like it's summertime so we've been doing more stuff me and my husband doing more stuff in summertime so i'm taking a little bit using these two weeks i'm not gonna work not gonna pick up any more shifts i'm just gonna be working from home doing my business and everything like that and doing my youtube and all that jazz um and enjoy my family and cleaning up i'm about to go get some cleaning supplies right now and start cleaning bathrooms and kitchens and throwing away stuff and cleaning out the fridge I'm mean, we're gonna be doing some meal prepping and we're about to go grocery shopping so i want to go to this market in the morning and get some fruits and some veggies and do some juicing and stuff like that but i need to clean my fridge and clean out all my juicing bottles clean out all my supplies make sure my juicer is all cleaned up and set up and everything because if i'm getting vet fruits and vegetables i mean i'm coming home and be having a chop and prep a whole bunch of fruits and vegetables and put them in the freezer and do all this extra stuff and bottle everything it's gonna be a lot of work so i need the house to be clean plus i want to get ready like i want like school like my kids are going to be starting both my kids are going to be in school this year thank you lord <laughs> they need a holy ghost dance y'all know what i mean like i need to <laughs> child do you know how blessed i feel right now <laughs> both my kids about to be in school and we ain't got to pay no money because we used to pay 800 plus a month for child care so both the kids come be in school child won't he do it won't he do it won't he do it so i want to get prepared for that and my husband's gonna be in school oh my gosh that's gonna be crazy and then more than likely i'm gonna be in school because i still need to do it's a lot it's a kind of a big like update I, I not a huge update that i need to tell y'all but i just i'm working on getting my bsn so there's some prereqs that i still need to do for my bsn so i'm gonna work on that like statistics um what else like an english class, like all humanities courses i'm like seriously and i freaking went to a liberal arts college i'm like what what's i doing that whole time like this is like that's now i have to do all humanities and like one math which is like a statistic i think i need to do quantitative reasoning as well i can i think so but that's for the i'm looking at siue here in the illinois region it's considered it's called southern illinois university of edwardsville siue i'm looking at their rns to bsn program because they have a crna program as well so i'm not 110 percent sure that crna is the route that i'm going for but if it is i want to be going for it so this is why i'm like let me look at their school for their bsn because i'm already at the school get my bsn now granted the classes i'm going to be taking are going to be online so i don't have to necessarily go up to the campus but i'm in the school and i'm going to graduate with my bsn from them if i do decide to go there so when it comes time to go for my crna i've already had some type of rapport at the school i've already taken courses at their school so i'm at the level where i can take courses at their school and i might be able to get some word in with a few professors you know on a back end and not that's like just put it in their ear what i want to do and just get you know get some people on my side get some allies and also see if this is the culture that i like as well do i like the culture of the school as far as going there for my crna so that's what i've been thinking about plus it's not too far from my house and my husband and i we might move to this area so it's just a lot it's a lot i haven't really told y'all too much because we're just going through the process but i'm kind of sort of giving y'all some more i'm letting y'all in a little bit more chat uh let's see what else but y'all know i be telling y'all so i just don't be telling y'all so. <laughs> i be telling y'all so y'all be knowing like i have to feel like i don't put my business out there too much on the internet but i be putting my business out there on the internet, but i don't though it's like a way to do it it's a way to do it um any home yeah that's where i'm at it's my little update i wanted to give y'all uh what else is there any more updates yeah i'm kind of sort of 
like feeling like insecure about how I'm gonna be on the unit. I kind of felt like a student a little bit as I was orientating. Only, and I think it's just like, Brandy, you don't know this hospital set. Like you're going from long-term care to a hospital. So you'll just have to adjust to it. It's okay. Like you don't have to be that, you know what I'm saying? Like you can still be you. You can still have confidence. You can still know what you know and do what you do and be yourself. But if you need help, just ask for help. That's okay. Just ask for help. And if you look slow or somebody you, you feel like somebody giving you like weird vibes because you asked for help or whatever the case may be i don't care like i'm not gonna put myself in a position where i feel that scared or that insecure or i'm that whatever in my ego that i'm not gonna be like this is too much for me or i can't do this or i, I need to ask for help or whatever like uh, and the thing is is i actually realized that when i was talking to the nurse because she had asked the charge nurse to start an IV for her and and then she was like asking charge nurse to do something else like the next day and then I was like on the first day I was like yeah I'm not used to asking for help so I'm gonna have to learn how to do it she's like yeah she's like they're not her reasoning for asking for help is because she said they're the charge nurse they don't have they they're free charge so they don't have an assignment they're here to help you anyway that's what she said and in my mind I was thinking like that's good because you be needing the help and, but i have to get out of my mind thinking like me asking this person for help is making is me looking a certain way or i don't know at least it's there at least there's a charge there too that's what i can think about too like at least there's a charge here to help you like you have the help and you're gonna learn it like you're it's not gonna take you that long even like in the matter of those after that first 12 hours that first shift i worked i felt even more confident the next day i came to work so and then I have these for these next two weeks off. So I'm going to be working on looking at some EKGs, looking at that telemetry, that part of nursing, because I have not looked at that yet. I have looked at it, you know, for nursing school, but I haven't had to use it in practice. So be on top of that. Uh, I do want to go look over some labs as well. Um, yeah, look over a few labs and look over my notes that I had. I'm cleaning up the house more, organizing the house, because like I said, I'm getting ready for everybody to start school this semester, this fall, so I really want to make sure my house is cool. I don't want to be doing it last minute, so if I can just do it over the next few weeks, because we already in the middle of June, yeah, like school starts in like a month and a half. Uh, if you count July, the rest of June, so like in two months, I would say about two months, so maybe like eight to 10 weeks, school is gonna be starting for a lot of people. So yeah, about like two, two and a half months. So just get started now. I, uh, what did I do? What did I do? I'm gonna go ahead and get the girls room together. I wanna work on getting a room together first. Um, getting their clothes that they don't need and all of that, getting all that together, donating stuff, cleaning out the closet, cleaning up under their beds. All of that stuff. All of that stuff <laughs> that they need to get together for their room. Um, but y'all know what I'm talking about? Just getting y'all lives together. That's kind of where I'm at right now. Plus, my birthday is coming up. My mom's birthday is this Monday. So, me and my sister have been going back and forth about what we're going to do for her birthday. And then my birthday is literally the next week. Like, my, me and my mother are born a week apart. So, can you imagine that? Being pregnant and then your birthday coming in the next week you get birth like god dang <laughs> um um there's a lot going on in my family too right now like in my personal life in my family not like my family like me my husband and my kids but like other parts of my family and it's just ugh. family yeah family is crazy family is weird as hell to me like i i don't want to say i envy but like i just I really don't understand the people who have like actual family ties like the uncles and the aunties and everybody talks to each other everybody's around each other helping each other and doing stuff for each other and you can call on your cousins and call on this and this and the third like I've never had that ever 
I've had like remnants of it and I've, I've also been very blessed with really 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 good friends and I have a good mom I have a great mom so I've been blessed in that respect but like not like oh my family we're just all so close and I can call on my cousins if I need this or I can do this if I know somebody doing this I can be like oh my uncle do this or that, or that, or that. nah fam that ain't that don't be happening it's not like that it's not like that at all but I'm just like, when I think about that, I, it's it's upsetting, especially like with my siblings, like me and my siblings, I don't really talk like that for real. Um, but then I think, well, this is why I have my own family. I'm creating my own family. This is what you do. That's why you create your own family. Because one day I'm gonna be somebody's great, great grandmother. You know, so like I'm gonna be, I am somebody's lineage. Like I'm somebody's ancestor, so you could create that for your own family. So that's what I be thinking. Like I be I be sad that I don't have it, but I'm like I can I can still have it. I can still be a part of it. I can still I can still give it to somebody else. You know, to my grandchildren or children and whatnot. So that'd be cool to look at it like that. It's hard for people to admit or see that they have trauma. People hide behind titles, relationships, addictions, and anything they can find to cover up the pain and all the emotions that come with it. You have to get through that pain to grow, but you need to see it first. You need to be honest enough with your damn self to see it, okay? Too many people refuse to see their truth and thus never grow um, or reach their potential and all the rewards that come with that. And... It's, it's very similar to how people, um, they say, you put like a, what do you put? Like a, a frog or some crab or some, some lobster in a pot and it's got water and the water is not cold at all. I mean, it's not hot at all. And you slowly increase the heat before you know it, the the animal is gone, right? It's like it didn't realize it was warming up and dying. It's slowly but surely, but it's gone. Um, and it's similar to what people do when it comes to their pain is that they numb themselves enough to get through life. They numb themselves, they pacify themselves enough and cover up the pain that they have enough and they cover it up with, like I said, titles, constantly needing to get a new accolade or a new degree or new something or to show that they got this or got that, this status or this relationship, hiding behind relationships, hiding within addictions and not wanting to deal with the pain or the trauma or anything that they've ever gone through, not wanting to even see it. Some people don't even realize they let their job dull them down. They let their family dull them down enough to where they completely just let their life go by. They don't reach or excel where they how they could reach and excel. And that looks different for everybody. Everybody, everybody looks different. But within your potential, some people, they can't reach that because they still ain't dealt with something that happened to them when they was three, four years old, five years old, something they heard or saw or anything that happened when they was kids or teenagers, stuff like that, that they don't deal with, that pain that they don't deal with, they don't see. They hide it, they cover it up, they just want to be numb just enough to get through the day. And trust me, I understand, I've, I've lived it myself, that's the only way I can talk about it. And what I can say is, if you're in that situation and you're feeling like that, ooh, now that's going to take some work, it's going to take some time. It, it's always an up and down battle, but just know that in order to get to the other side of where you're going, which you, where you want to be and how you want to be and where you want to live, you need to face whatever that trauma is. And you, and sometimes that means that it, it really is not even that bad. It's not that hard. It's more so just changing like how you see yourself, really just changing your relationship with yourself. Once you start working on your relationship with yourself and building it up and building on yourself and taking care of yourself and giving yourself the time and energy that you need to be vulnerable and to be open and to be free and to be, and to have discipline and be restrictive, whatever your body needs and your soul and your energy needs, give it to yourself, give it to yourself. And before you know it, God will start showing you, the universe will start showing you how to get rid of that trauma, how to deal with the trauma, not really get rid of it because it's there, but how to see it, how to get through it, how to sift through it, give you the people that you need to help you to get through with the circumstances, because it's, you're never alone in this situation. You're never alone. You're never alone, but you got to focus on you. 
Sometimes that means not picking up that extra shift. Sometimes it means you need to stop that, that relationship. Sometimes it means you need to give up whatever habits that you got right now that, that ain't really feel, fulfilling you right now. It could be something as small as you got the habit of being on your phone for two or three hours a day. Get off that phone. I don't know. Or it could just be simply the way you talk to yourself. Do you talk to yourself in a demeaning way? Stop it. So, yeah, I know I just love to promote the self-love. Let me get off my soapbox chair and finish editing this video. But I had to add this to it. I love you all. Let's get back to the vid. Thank you. Mwah. And that's just what I be focusing on. So, on that note, I'm going to go ahead and go be somebody's. I don't know. Because my daughter is asleep. My husband's chilling. He eating. My other daughter at camp, summer camp. I'm really about to go run to the store. And, like I said, get some cleaning supplies. I'm going to go to Family Dollar. Anybody else go to Family Dollar or Dollar General to get, um, I like to go to Family Dollar because they be having some deals sometimes to get cleaning stuff for your house. I feel like they be having some really good deals. Like, for real. Like, legit. <laughs> you like Family Dollar. Anybody else think Family Dollar the hood, Walmart? I said that to my husband. He was like, what? I was, he was like, no, it's more, it's not the hood, Walmart. I was like, yes, it is. They got a whole clothing section. They got all of that. And it be it. Because, you know, Walmart don't be in the hood anyway. Let me go, y'all. Some of you may or may not know, I am an STL born girl, okay? Yes, Midwestern girl next door vibes. So, today is June 27th. It's actually the day after my mama's birthday. She's turned 58. My big sis and I took her out for breakfast. We already saw her the night before her actual birthday, and we did, you know, all the birthday, happy birthday, and all that vibes. We went to one of my favorite breakfast places here in St. Louis, Egg Restaurant. Freaking love it, the one on Locust. Um, I try to be an adult and get mushrooms, y'all. I'm not with the the fungus among us. Like, I cannot do mushrooms, y'all. I just scrape it to the side. But everything was good. Great service. As always, my big sis. So, yeah, this part, when I tell you, <laughs> I know it was said in this part. It was, yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Anywho, we had a great day. Love you, Mama. Happy birthday.